What's going on everybody? Welcome back to ward number 13. I'm John and today we're going to be going back to the well of r slash entitled parents. So get ready for a good one. Some interesting stories coming your way. If you enjoy the video consider subscribing to help us out. Otherwise have a great day and have a good time. All right, we're going to start off today with a tough decision. Anytime you involve finances and family, it gets real dicey. So what do you guys think? Did she make the right choice? Another entitled mother wants me to take out a mortgage for her. I've seen a few similar posts and surprised by my own similar experience. I could include a lot more, but I'll try to not be over inclusive. So a little background about me. I'm an only child, 30s female parents divorced when I was around 10 and have never had a good relationship with my mother. As per my mother, I didn't even like being held by her as an infant. I lived with her till I was 18 and couldn't handle living with her any longer and moved in with my father. I admit I was a horrible teenager to my mother and we fought 24-7 or just didn't talk. I just wanted to be left alone and she wanted to be BFFs. I own my own condo, no debt, saving and live a lifestyle more to the frugal side background on mother. 70s. Grew up in wealth. Blew her rather substantial trust fund. History of credit card debt. Did work, but no real retirement fund, and now living off deceased parents' trust, where she gets more per year than the average annual U.S. income. Despite living in the same city, I'd see her a few times at most per year, mainly holidays. I'll admit, I was never exactly warm during those times, and she's made comments about how she knows how much it pains me to be around her. I'd make an effort to call her once a month. She'd almost never answer, and I'd sometimes get an email or text message in response. I feel she is highly critical, history of emotional blackmail, and has narcissistic traits. Her comments are only because I care, and I wouldn't be your mother if I didn't say, i.e. expressing her concerns if I had children, because they may be more screwed up than me. Had some typical mental health issues as a teen. I give an inch and she wants a mile kind of thing, i.e. wants a photo of me. Give her one, but it's not close enough and I have sunglasses on. Trivial, but you get my point. So, during early COVID, get a call from her wanting to discuss something. Basically, she wants to sign a purchasing contract and mortgage papers for a yet to be constructed since she's retired and her income is from a trust, she can't get a loan for the deposit and doesn't have the cash. I know a few costly things she spent her money on in the last few years that I don't agree with, but not like it was having an impact on me. She owns her house but doesn't want to sell prior to the condo being built, so wants me to take out a mortgage for $1 million with early access of the $120,000 deposit. But... As per her, it's fine because the condo will be in my name and she'll make the payments till she sells her house. When I say discussion, I'm told the contact is being drafted and I need to make an appointment with my bank. For a brief moment, I considered lending her the cash, but then I'd be broke. Also, I have no trust when it comes to finances and my mother due to her history. So, after using my brain and consulting with a few people who can be objective, I struggle when it comes to my mother. I told her, unfortunately, I was not in a position to help her. Then the insults start on how I'm consulting with the wrong people. These people clearly aren't educated and I'm passing up a good opportunity for my credit. And of course, because of me, she lost out on the condo. She then refused to talk to me, as this was the final straw in our front relationship. I tried to contact her for many months, maybe over a year, until I told her I was moving countries and wanted to try and make some repairs to our relationship before I left. Oh, got some nice comments about that too. We did sit down and talk prior to me leaving, but not about the condo. I'm trying to be civil, but after so many years of her comments, it's really hard. My mum tried keeping my hamster. Sorry for the boring title. This is a true story with a bit of backstory in order to understand. So I 13 female and my mum the entitled parent. I had to move out of her house for personal reasons that I'm not comfortable explaining on here, so a few weeks ago, I wanted to bring my hamster to my new house, who I've had for about two years, and I love very much. But obviously, that wasn't going to happen. The conversation went like this, while my mom was here on a visit. Me. Hey, mom. How are you? Mom. Yeah, fine. Me. 
Would you be okay with Dinks coming to the new house? Mum, uh, no. Me. Why? She's my hamster. Mum, because without her, I'll be lonely. Some important information. My mum has never paid attention to Dinks until I left my home and has only started to get me back. She also doesn't clean her when she needs cleaning and she gets left with not enough water sometime. So, after the first conversation, I asked if she could bring Dinks to visit during our next visit and she agreed, or so we thought. Next day, she comes, no hamster. She then says it's too difficult to bring her, understandable. Then, she says it's her hamster, it's not, and how much she loves her and blah blah blah. She goes home after a few hours and I still don't have my pet. Finally, I go to her house and end up taking the hamster. I should mention, we have three other pets, who she prefers anyway, so she won't be alone. Dinks is living at the new house and is now being cleaned and fed whenever she needs. He ruins everything. Rant post. My 41 female father, 64 male, ruins literally everything he touches. At the end of 2020, my grandfather who raised me passed away. Because it was 2020, he didn't have a chance that year to have his will amended and told me when I had seen him at Christmas that he had an appointment for January of 21 to have it done, but unfortunately, he passed before then. I explained that to say that when he passed without a will, all of his assets, except an annuity that I was the beneficiary of, defaulted to my dad, since my aunt had passed a few years earlier. Multiple houses, cars, land, and lots of money all went to my dad. Initially, my dad acknowledged that had my grandpa made it to that January appointment, everything would have been very, very different and pretended he was going to do the right thing. I'm not a brat, I'm not spoiled, and all I asked for was the four acres of property that my grandparents had set aside and told me, my dad, our entire extended family, belonged to me for 26 years. I saw it the first time when I was 14 and was told then and there that it was mine. Looking back, I'm regretting not taking it over while they were still living. I was just never quite ready to settle down, so that's my fault. Since my grandpa passed, my dad has been slowly going back on all the things he promised he would do, to the point that the last time I spoke with him, he argued with me that I shouldn't have the land because when you die, your stepdad's kids will get it, meaning my half-siblings, and he argued to the point that I had all of them send him a text message stating that they weren't interested in that land just so he couldn't use it as an excuse anymore, and he had to admit that he was just a shitty person I never actually intended on honoring my grandpa's wishes in the first place. That was two months ago. Last week I went home to my grandparents' house, the house I was raised in, to get the last of my things and say goodbye to my home just to walk in and see that he has completely destroyed it. My bedroom was filled with trash. The bathrooms were caked in filth and covered in urine. There were broken doors and cabinets and dog shit stains all over the house from him letting his dogs shit on the floor instead of cleaning it up, just leaving it there. And the smell, ugh. I live in another state. I didn't expect much when I went to the house, but seeing my home that I shared with my grandparents, the way that it was made me feel like I'd lost them all over again. He's had enough money and resources to be able to hire a cleaning service and lawn care over the past year, but instead has taken everything that my grandparents worked 70 plus years for and had destroyed it. He's bought himself a new house and multiple brand new cars and untold how much in musical equipment, but is too damn sorry and disrespectful to keep our family home at least semi-clean. My grandpa told me the last time that I visited that my dad had ruined the last years of his life, and as I sat on the living room floor breaking my heart over not ever being able to say goodbye to my home because he ruined that too, I decided that all the light I brought into that house would be leaving with me. My friend and I took every single light bulb out of the house when we left, fridge and oven light included. I've gone completely NC without explanation since then. He doesn't get to ruin me too. If all he wants is everything that has a cash value, he can have it. I have the priceless things and he can enjoy sitting in the dark. My father is upset I won't buy him a house. My dad trashed his credit when he was younger. On top of that, he had his first kid, me, when he was 18 and left my bio mom after the fourth kid after five years together. I'm not sure how long that time was, but because of this, he had to pay child support until we were put in foster care and eventually he got custody of us. Well, he never ended up paying that child support, 
which further ruined his credit. It's been 20 years, and he's not paid a dime. He obtained his money through illegal means and my brother's SSI check. He also hasn't done a thing to even attempt to improve his credit. Well, because of that, he can't or refuses to have anything in his name expecting me and my siblings to do it for him. His business is in my brother's name after running it illegally for nearly 10 years. Now he wants to buy the house he lives in. It was supposed to be sold to him through land contract, but of course, he made this deal by word versus actually obtaining a contract. The landlord, I guess, is trying to sell the house, and because my brother wasn't approved, he's depending on me to do it. I have the best credit, and make the most money on paper compared to my other siblings. I refuse, though. I'm happy to help point him in the right direction to approve his own credit and do everything through the right channels, but I refuse to do this for him. I'd be buying him his first home before buying my own, and that doesn't sit right with me. Now he's blowing up my phone, telling me how he raised me, and I owe him for that. All the sacrifices and bad choices he had to make in order to raise us. How I never help. I'm just cold and heartless. It's like no matter how much I give, it never seems to be enough. The worst part is that he fails to realize that I could never depend on him for help if I truly needed it. Rant over. And we wrap our video up today with an ultimatum. Some people really don't respond well to them. So, what do you think about this person's choice? Pick your family or your boyfriend. A year ago, almost to the day, I learned I was pregnant. My boyfriend, now husband, and I were excited. We had talked about kids one day, but our son decided to join us earlier than expected. It's fine. We love him dearly. My parents, on the other hand, I'd planned to tell them when I was much further along. That way, my little boy would be outside the 12-week danger zone, and I could confidently say I was having a baby. That plan changed with a miscarriage scare and a hospital visit. My baby was fine, but I was scared to death. I got to my car after it all and proceeded to call my mom and break down crying. Now, my parents are deeply religious, members of the Latter-day Saint community. Finding out their unwed daughter was pregnant was quite a shock to them. My mom is also a narcissist. So, this was clearly a personal attack to her self-image on my part. She at least was chill with most of it, having gone through four turbulent pregnancies herself. So, I can say she tried to alleviate my stress a bit. Dad is a whole other story. One day, in between packing up my apartment for storage and stressing about not stressing, he called me to have a serious chat. He started off by telling me he forgave me for my sins and to give me some advice, namely, go to the temple, get sealed to my child, and do all their work, baby blessing, baptism, etc., behind my husband's back. Don't let him stop you from receiving your eternal blessings, he'd said. Me, so I should separate my child and their father? Dad, you'll still have your family, and if you so choose, you can visit husband in the terrestrial kingdom later. Save yourself for the higher glory. Multiple kingdoms of heaven, it gets unnecessary. Me, but if families are meant to be together forever, why should I separate my child and his father who I love? Dad, only families who live by the gospel standard get to live together in heaven. You'll have to choose between your family and him. I don't remember what was said after this, but I knew I was distraught. For a faith centered on families, he was quick to dismiss the one I'm building now. He also doesn't see my marriage as legitimate because we didn't have a temple ceremony, and we're waiting to have a full civil ceremony until later. He still bombards me with church propaganda and insists on me getting work done without my husband's approval because baby's eternal soul is more important than husband's feelings. I will add here at the end that my husband and I are choosing to raise our son without direct religion. Let him discover what he believes and support him in it as he gets older.